Hello everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again with another exclusive part of this ser of the things exclusive to this channel. Original. Oh, this video was uploaded on the on my other channel, but that's because I had difficulty uploading to this one. But now we got that going. It's gonna be all the main chapters will be on this channel, and some of the uploads for for the people, the customers, may requests. Mm, all things considered, they'll most likely end up on this channel, but I think I'll probably end up putting them on the other channel. But that's to be determined later. Anyway, for right now though, we'll read chapter 2 of A Girl Who Brought Down the World and Still Apparently Survived the House Fire. Hmm. Chapter 2. Memories. I need my glasses. Mom! Dad! We cannot let this man through our front door! Vivian exclaimed as the family was unpacking many of their belongings. He will kill us all! I swear to God! Vivian, I know you've got trouble with guests. Just calm down, Miles responds. This isn't an ordinary guest! I, I, Vivian stuttered. Vivian, maybe you should talk with him again. He does not seem to be that bad a person. He just has, have, hasn't run in with Lady Luck yet. I feel pretty crazy sometimes too until I met your father. Vivian just grunts and walks up the steps to the kids' room. The kids' room. Kid, we need to talk. Sis, can we do this some other time? It's about evil Santa. <laughs> Kid gas as she hears the name. Kid, we need to find out everything about him. He's coming for dinner. And he will put you on the naughty list. You must not let this happen. But this, you should you say we shouldn't ever meet with him again. Right, which is why he must go to Waynesworth Enterprises and find this male person. Maybe she can tell us more about Christabel. You should come, it'll be fun. My sis took me out to Waynesboro Enterprises today. Waynesworth Enterprises. The city is so big, I've never been in a taxi before. It was fun. We drove real fast to our place. Viv said to run out of the car and into the building. That was fun. Sometimes I wish I could spend all my day with time with Vivian. Here we are, kid. Waynesworth Enterprises. Now to find Mel. There are so many people here. How will we find her? Huh. I really should think things through more sometimes. Uh, we'll just ask that friendly person over there. Hello, girls. Are you lost? Asked the attendant. Yeah, we were supposed to meet up with Mel. She's a family friend. And she was supposed to give us a tour of the place from my sister's school report, Vivian explained. Oh, Mel. That's odd. She usually doesn't have any visitors ever since the incident. Yeah, just head up to 473 and I'll have her meet you there. Thanks. Come on, kid. Let's go. The two stepped out and was greeted by an attractive girl who looked to be in her twenties. Hi, Mel. Yeah, who are you? Yo, my name's Vivian. And she's kid. We're here to talk about Crystal Bell. Vivian spoke. We just moved here yesterday, and I have some questions I'd like to ask. Ugh. Not him. Just not him. Look, give me three minutes and I'll be off work. Just sit tight over here and I'll try to explain some things then. Vivian and Kid sat in Mel's office cubicle. There was a picture of her and her brother on the wall. A few letters on the wall indicate that one of her best friends had died in Afghanistan and that her mother and father missed her terribly. In a trash laid a message from Christobel. Dear Melanie, I've missed you so much. I'm sorry for what I did. Can you ever forgive me? Please. I love you, Mel. I love you more than life itself. I know what I did was wrong. It was just a mistake. I will never try to hurt your feelings again. Please, Mel, please. Oh, Crystal Bell. There were over seven crumpled up messages that were sent from Crystal Bell in the trash. Staring back at the office, the phrase, Liberty bounced around the computer monitor. Ah, you did. Come on, let's go find a place to talk. 
After taking them out for ice cream, they all went to the park in a nice grassy area with those crystal bell and his antics. Hmm. Yeah, I feel so free on the grass. My life has been so great ever since Crystal Bell went away. Now it's claimed. Ever since that day, I decided to take more control of life. Everything has gone my way. So, what has led up to this? I guess hippie lifestyle? Mocked Vivian. It isn't hippie. It's just freer. Liberty. Isn't that what we all strive for? Well, Miss Melanie, I want to know about Evil Santa, said Kid. What? Oh, Kid. Before this gets our... Before this gets our hand, Vivian is playing. He isn't Evil Santa. He's just a terrible person. Maybe I should expose you to the horrors of the real world. I'm sure I... Wait, Vivian. Yeah, Vivian. Maybe I should expose you to the horrors of the real world. I'm sure a nine-year-old can take it. So I'm still in the goodness? Uh, yes. Yes, you are. So why is Crystal Bell a bad person? Eh, uh, let me explain, said Mel as she took out a piece of paper from her wallet. Hmm. This is called a restraining order. It's very useful for stalkers. Learn about them. The law is your friend. Sure, this might be against what you call my hippie ways, but the government is on my side for once. So that's why Christopher kept getting. That's why Crystal Bell kept getting stopped by the police, Mark Vivian. Well, that's not all. Maybe I should start all the way from when I first met him. It all began when I got an internship at Wainsworth Enterprises. It was going fairly smoothly until I first saw him send up a game of rocket flingers outside the building. It was quite awkward seeing a grown man playing that silly game, but at the time it was also pretty, I was also pretty weird myself because I also carried around the set. So I told him on the spot and I told him to meet me at Game Wars for tournament. Then went to work and thought nothing of it. You know I went to those tournaments just for fun even though it was kind of childish, but Crystal Bell just could not keep his hands off me. Every time he got close to me, he sort of tried to grope me. I couldn't stand that once he tried to kiss me. So I called the police and had him arrested for sexual harassment. I mean, I had the beggars act as witnesses. They have all seen him act like a pervert. I guess I have a soft spot for idiots, because once he was released from jail, he came back. I didn't think of it too much until the robbery occurred. I was so scared when the gunman told us all to go into the back room. I guess I had a meltdown on top of Christabel. He took that the wrong way and then attempted to, well, kid you're too young to know about this. That was the final straw. I could not let this go on any longer. I filed a restraining order against him and decided to drop all means of communication from him. He still manages to send me creepy messages as many as nine a day, and that's all I can say about Crystal Bell. I regret trusting him so much in the past. You two should not make that same mistake as I did. Uh, that just twists an already twisted story, muttered Vivian. He said I was cute. He can't be that bad, right? Question, kid. Oh, kid, you're, too, you're still too young to understand. There are males in this world who say things and don't mean it. Male attempts to explain. Why would you want to lie to me? I'm just a little girl. Okay, I think so. Uh, there are some people in this world who know no moral boundaries. Some people in this world are unable to see things from another's point of view. Some people in this world just aren't meant for society. Some people have no hope for ever adjusting to what we call normal. Crypto Bell is one of them. You two should have your parents do something. I'll talk I'll go talk to them. I met a friend today. 
Her name was Mel. She is 24. She might not be a friend my age, but she still treats me nice. She took me out for ice cream. I love ice cream. She warned me about Christobel and his lying ways. I guess this is what we call growing up. Not everyone who appears nice is nice. Makes me sad to know that some people who have to be evil know that some people who have to be evil. Hmm. Well, this is kind of a grammatical error right there, I think. Hmm. Christabel watches outside his windows. The flies buzzing about his room do not deter him from just staring out the window, watching, waiting. What he hopes to achieve through this perseverance is unknown to everyone, even himself. It's four o'clock. The dinner does not begin until six. He still has time to wait. Outside, Mel parks her car and she follows Vivian and Kid to their house. Crystal Bell immediately stands up and breaks into a song. My lovely baby Melody, she's as cute as Sandy Bumblebee. La dee dee da dee da dee, she's my wonderful lady. He sits both down and watches as she disappears into the house. Hmm. I'm trying to figure out who says this here. Yeah. Oh, I think he says this. Hmm. I understand. They wanted to surprise me and have me and Mel get back together. Someone finally understands my plight. For far too long, people have kicked me around saying that I'm too selfish. It's not my fault I'm too selfish. It's your fault. It's all your fault. I just want what I deserve! Mel and I should be together. We should have our future daughter together for love and honesty. Prevails over those cops who tried to stop our love. I knew this day would come. I have to get ready. I have to look my best. Christabel has a big grin on his face as he walks into the bathroom preparing to shave. For the first time of life. Hmm. Ever since my oh wait, uh, somebody says this. Oh, ever since my parents died, I always have had, had their have had their help. While God may have taken them too soon for me, I will prevail with God's will. Yeah. Uh, did you just hear cries of pain, Mimi? Mel asked. Yeah. Yes, yeah, odd. Must be the television. Anyway, Melanie, it's nice to meet you. My children have said that they know more about our new you know more about our new neighbor. Yeah, he should not be alive. He's a horrible person who has done so many things to me. It all began and I ended up with this restraining order, Mel concluded. The there must be something wrong with this man for that level of... I do not know where to begin to describe such behavior. And I never asked. I honestly have no idea how he manages to live by himself all alone in that house. I don't even know if he has a jab. Well, Melanie, I will just say we have had a family emergency when he shows up for dinner then. I do not think I have what it takes to me, in me to lie. I think I'll match. Good. To be honest, I don't have any friends, and they seem to be like me and my brother when we were younger. I was playing. I was having fun. Crystal Bell stepped outside of his bathroom, smelling of cologne. He looks at the clock. Five and a half. He still has half an hour. He decides to pick out his best outfit. He looks through his jewelry case and finds his high school ring. He puts it off for good luck. Luck. It is what he needs to win back Melanie from the evil caps. He took the pictures of him and Melanie. He looks at them. The first win at Game Wars, the victory dinner at the bowling game. And he drew a picture, a picture of him, Melanie, and his future daughter, drawn in crayon. He is especially proud of that drawing. Crypto Bell looks at the clock, 15 minutes left. He decides to get a drink from the refrigerator. 
Yes, the choice is yes. Diet or regular? It takes two diets. When he closes the refrigerator door, a picture falls down. He replaces the magnet that held up the picture. The picture fits in nicely among the other drawings on the door. He steps out for the first time in ages and walks over to the neighbor's door. He knocks. Oh, quick the bell. We weren't expecting you until seven. Look, we've had a family emerging. Hello, Melody. Your sweetheart is here. Quick the bell. And now it's a nice me. Quick the bell. <gasps> Melody gasps. Oh, doggone it. This selfie stick. Oh, well. Tune in next week or later this week as I'll read the next chapter. Thank you and have a good day. Yeah.